Right. So, um, um, as I said, the flip side of dispersion is focusing. If you time reverse a dispersive effect, you get a focusing effect. So waves, which are very spread out at some time, can focus um, at, um, at in all the energy into one point at some later time. Um, and if, 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 uh, if your wave is high frequency, this, this can happen quite quickly. And so, and so very quickly, you can get um, a lot of high frequency energy at one point. And this is, this is uh, reflected mathematically in what's called a loss of regularity of your solution if you measure it in certain sublev norms. But, um, so there's a, um, for any given time, you can, you can have a, a lot of, of, of loss of regularity. This is in contrast to other basic equations of physics, like the heat equation, where there's lots and lots of smoothing. Um, but wave equations are not smoothing. Um, they, you can lose um, a lot of regularity at any given time. But focusing is very transient. Uh, if you take a wave and it focuses at one point, um, then right after it focuses, it's going to spread out again, and it, 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 it will spread out. So, um, so while focusing can happen, it can't happen very often. Um, um, and you know, every time, every time two waves focus, uh, like the, if, so, any time two bits of energy come together, they should then go apart and never and never interact again. Um, and so, while you can create a lot of focusing at one time, if you average over time, you should get a lot less uh, focusing on average than you do in the worst case scenario. Um, and so, this is a phenomenon called local smoothing, um, and it, it means that even though waves can temporarily be very, very bad. Um, they are actually fairly smooth. They, 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 they kind of smooth, um, they, they have um, smooth solutions for most times, just there's a few bad times where you can't control anything. Um, and so uh, if you actually want to analyze these equations, and particularly if you want to perturb them and analyze more complicated, like nonlinear version of these equations, it's very important that you actually quantify precisely how much local smoothing you have. Um, and uh, so that, that sort of quantifies how much regularity you expect to lose at, at short times. Um, and then by rescaling, uh, this is, it's very closely related to what called time decay estimates. It just, it, it, it's just how much decay can you have over long times. It, it's, it's almost the same question. Um, so uh, <laughs> to summarize 100 of years of wave harmonic analysis and wave equations, uh, people have basically been proving lots and lots of local smoothing and time decay estimates. Um, I will not survey all of them. That is impossible. Um, to mention one that I quite like, um, which is uh, one of the first ones actually, it's the uh, uh, it's 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 the, the Moravitz estimate um, first introduced. Well, it's a there's, there's a whole family of Moravitz estimates, but uh, it was introduced by Kathleen Moravitz uh, back in the 60s uh, using what we now call the Moravitz multiplier method. Um, so. Um, Basically, what Moravitz did was she um, modified energy conservation. Um, to, uh, so you know, energy is conserved. So she, she looked at uh, modified energies where she treats incoming waves and outgoing waves differently. So she multiplies the solution by a certain multiplier uh, to favor, uh, I think uh, the way it works is uh, um, incoming waves get a negative weight. Uh, waves that sort of, say, say go to, towards the origin get a negative weight, but waves that go out, away from the origin get a positive weight. Uh, and by weighting the energy, it's no longer conserved. Um, but what she shows is it's actually increasing. Um, that basically the thing about waves is that waves can go inwards; they can go towards the origin, and they can go outwards, away from the origin. Um, and they can, uh, and you can transition from inward to outward. If a wave is going towards the origin, it can pass through or fly by, and then it will, be, it will go outward. But the reverse never happens. If a wave is already going outgoing, it will never somehow come back and become ingoing. Right? I mean, if there's boundaries and so forth, then maybe yes. But, if, but for the free wave equation without boundaries, ingoing maps to outgoing, but not vice versa. So she was able to quantify a weighted version of, of, of energy, which, which um, uh, weights incoming and outgoing um, differently. And she could show that this was not conserved, but it was increasing over time. And, uh, but she could also show it was bounded. Uh, it, it, the way she weighted it, it's basically bounded by the energy. This is a bit of a lie, but this is roughly speaking true. Um, and um, so it's increasing, but it can't increase too much. Um, but uh, every time it, it, every time the wave, went, uh, but she could also show that every time the wave went near the origin, um, it would flip some of the energy from incoming to outgoing. And so you couldn't have too much energy, um, too, much, too much of the wave at the origin over long periods of time, because that would keep um, making her, her multiply, uh, her weighted energy keep going up, but it has to stay bounded. So if you put all this together, uh, you can prove uh, these, these Moravitz estimates. Uh, and there's, there's a bunch of them, and, and they're all kind of useful. Um, here's one of the simplest ones. Uh, if you have a three-dimensional wave um, of, of finite energy, um, 
then um, there's a, there was some time decay at the spatial origin. So if you, if you just look only at the origin and you just look at, at what the wave is doing at the spatial origin, um, over time, the wave will, will dissipate. Um, that uh, um, um, it, it cannot stay high amplitude for long periods of time. It must actually, actually decay uh, in the sense that its total integral must actually be finite. Um, Right, which, which corresponds to our experience. You know, we, we know from Huygens' principle, for example, that if you have a disturbance in three dimensions, eventually the wave will move away from the origin and you don't see it anymore. Um, but um, the beauty of this estimate is that um, you don't need to be localized at the origin in order for this. Your wave could, could, could have all kinds of, of waves going in and out, and it could focus at various times, but this estimate is always true. Um, and it's a great estimate. Um, the, um, what's powerful about this method is that it actually even works even for nonlinear equations. Not all nonlinear equations, but there are many nonlinear wave equations for which this method actually works, and it's extremely useful. Um, lots of our understanding of, uh, of, uh, of nonlinear wave equations would not be possible, actually, without the Moravis estimates. And there, uh, okay, well, not just, I mean, she invented the first few, but the, the, the next hundred or so <laughs> of what we rely on. Okay. All right, so uh, that's sort of, uh, that's 20th century uh, local smoothing. Um, um, but, okay, I mean, um, there were other estimates that people wanted but uh, couldn't prove. Um, so there's, there's something called Sog's local smoothing conjecture, uh, which uh, only got solved a few years ago. Um, so that's kind of the 21st century component. All right, yeah, it's, it's motivated uh, from a theorem in analysis, which maybe I will not talk about. It's, it's called the Lebesgue differentiation theorem. Uh, it was actually, it's, uh, um, okay, yeah, it, it's, uh, uh, maybe I will not uh, tell you about this theorem, uh, but it's, uh, um, yeah, it, it relates to a function, uh, it shows that it, it, an average function can be approximated by, by its sort of local averages of that function. It's a very basic theorem in, uh, in analysis, um, but, it, uh, but in order for this theorem to work, it, it had to average over these balls. Um, and there was this long-standing question uh, for a while, what happens if you average in different ways? And so people were studying what happened, uh, if, can you approximate a function by its average, say, over circles rather than balls? Um, and uh, this you can also do, uh, and this was done by, famously by Bourgain in 1968. Uh, it's called Bourgain's Circular Maximal Theorem. In fact, it was so well regarded, I think it was also even cited in his first model citations, one of the things he did, um, that he was able to show um, that, that uh, an approximation theorem for uh, that any function can be can be approximated by by circular averages, as, as given a certain integrability condition, which I won't talk about. Um, as it, it was a very difficult argument um, using a lot of geometric analysis, which actually anticipated a lot of the modern work that, that we do nowadays. But at the time, it was it was really quite a shocking, like really hardcore piece of piece of analysis. Um, uh, there was a simpler proof given by Chris Sog uh, later um, that he realized that actually these questions of circular averages are actually um, closely related to the wave equation, you know, that, uh, that uh, um, you know, waves propagate out in circles um, in two dimensions, pretty much. And so conversely, if you want to know what a solution is doing at time t, um, you have to know what, what is going on. You can, you can propagate backwards in time, and there'll be this little circle. And what the wave is doing on that circle will tell you what the wave is doing now. Um, and he could rewrite um, Bourgain's circular maximum theorem in terms of the wave equation, and he reproved it. Um, and by doing so, he realized actually that um, maybe he could actually do prove something stronger than than uh, um, than Bourgain's circular Maxwell theorem. And uh, he was eventually led to this conjecture, uh, which okay, uh, yeah. If you don't know what a sum of those spaces, uh, this conjecture won't very mean very much. But it's 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 a local smoothing estimate. It, it tells you some control of your solution at 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 local at local times, say times region one and two, in terms of what the solution is doing at time zero. Um, and you lose some derivatives, uh, so this is alpha, which, which represents how many derivatives you lose in this estimate. But the amazing thing with, with this conjecture is that you, you lose almost nothing. Um, almost any other estimate for um, the wave equation loses at least you know, some positive number of derivatives. Uh, like the Moravitz estimate that I just showed you loses uh, one, uh, one full derivative. But this is an estimate that it, it, it loses uh, almost no derivatives. Um, you can take any alpha as small as you wish, and this estimate is supposed to be true. Uh, so it was a very bold conjecture, um, and at the time, there's sort of no real reason why it should be true. Um, um, but yeah, it was solved uh, in 2019, actually, by Larry Guth, Hong Wang, and Wu Shang Zhang, uh, by a very nice argument. Um, at least in two dimensions, we, we uh, understand the conjecture. In three and higher, we still don't know, and there's actually very good reasons why we don't know uh, this conjecture. But, um, uh, but it is actually solved now. Um, but it's... Um, 
yeah, the, the proof goes through all kinds of other mathematics, which uh, um, the connections to which have been understood for years now. But it's, it's always a surprise when you first see it. You know, these questions about waves, they're actually inherently geometric problems. Uh, well, at least they have a very large geometric, geometric component. Um, and they're tied in particular to a very classical problem uh, called the Kikia needle problem. So this is it's the following problem. that If you take um, a unit needle in the plane um, and you want to turn it around um, by 180 degrees, you want to rotate the needle on the plane, uh, the question is what, what's the smallest amount of area you need in order to, to turn the needle around? Um, so you, know, you could just turn it around by, by a, um, you know, in a circular motion and that will give you like pi over 4 area or something. Um, but you know, you know, just like uh, if you want to get a, park, a tight parking spot, you can maybe try to three-point U-turn or something, um, and uh, you can you can move around what's called a, a deltoid shape, which actually is pi over eight area rather than pi over four. You can you can conserve some area by by being um, smarter with uh, your parallel parking. Um, uh, why you would do that? Well, okay, but um, all right, um, but. Um, Actually, it turns out that if you, uh, instead of a three-point U-turn, you do a five-point or seven-point. If you, if, you, if, you, if you do like lots of little, little turns, uh, it turns out that actually you, you can turn the needle around using arbitrarily small area. Um, that there is a way, um, uh, so there are these things called Kikea sets. Uh, Kikea set is a set that contains a unit line segment in, in every direction. And these are basically, um, roughly speaking, these are sets in which it's possible to do a very fancy parallel parking maneuver and turn um, a needle around. And you can use as little area as you wish. Um, so uh, this was constructed by Bezukhovich first uh, back in the early 20th century. Um, and um, these turn out to be connected to local smoothing. Um, so uh, for example, there's this, there's this little epsilon loss of derivatives in, in, in this conjecture. Um, and you could be really optimistic and say that maybe there's no loss of derivatives at all. Maybe the conjecture is true and, and with, with alpha equals zero. Uh, but it was shown by Tom Wolfe in, in, um, in 99 that uh, this doesn't happen because of these KKS sets. Um, and why is there a connection? Um, it's because they think called wave trains. Um, so um, we're seeing these plane waves which are completely spread out in, 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 in space. But there are these localized versions of plane waves which are called wave trains. They, 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 they're like plane waves localized to a, a little rectangle. And they just move like a train um, for some period of time before dispersing. Um, but it's possible to localize a, a wave train to um, a little rectangle, which you should think of as being like a needle. Um, and using these care sets, it's possible to get a whole bunch of, of wave trains, which initially at time zero are very far apart from each other, very spatially separated. But as they move in, they, they, they slide into this care set where they all overlap with each other very heavily. Um, and they overlap for quite a, a long period of time. So it's, it's not like these focusing examples where just, there's, there's an instant where they focus and they spread out. These trains, they take a long time to pass through the, um, the care set. So there's actually a long period of time for which they, they are concentrated. And so, um, so the um, averaging time doesn't actually get you any more smoothing. Um, and so you can show that, that you, you do not have perfect local smoothing. The existence of care sets actually tells you that, that perfect local smoothing is not possible. But this turns out to somehow be the only, so, so what Guth, Wang, and Zhang showed is that this is somehow the, the only obstruction that, that apart from these weird care set type examples, um, there is, is actually local smoothing. Um, um, yeah, but to do that, you have to understand the Kikea conjecture better. Uh, but fortunately, two dimensions, we actually do have a pretty good, good understanding. Um, and then there's, there's always intermediate conjectures uh, uh, between Kikea and local smoothing you have to understand as well. Um, so I'm running out of time. So I won't uh, uh, say, actually, okay, so one of my first papers actually was to, uh, to understand the, the connections between all these conjectures. It's a paper of mine from 99 where I, I proved a bunch of, of implications between various conjectures. You see local smoothing on the top and the Kikea said so at the bottom, and then there's always other ones that I don't want to talk about. Um, okay, so maybe I will, uh, all right, I was going to talk about the number theory connections, but maybe I think uh, I'm out of time now, so maybe this is a good, good time to stop. So. <laughs>